In light of Senator Price's speech to the press club this week, there's been some people who are, it seems, very eager to try and make the topic of colonialism the kind of yes, no or good, bad question. Now, no doubt there are some things that were bad and there were some things that were good about the colonial experience, but isn't the way forward here to stop looking at it in this, for want of a better term, black and white way, and instead say, what do we do now to make life better for all Australians? Well, you hit the nail on the head. If, if you're going to sit there and worry about what happened 200 years ago uh, and worry about that colonial experience over that, you know, that 1788 right up until the early 20th century, then uh, then you're never going to move forward. You, you, what you've got to do is recognise, everyone recognise, everyone knows the history, no one knows the facts. But since the 1967 uh, referendum, post, you know, Second World War, for the last 56 years, we've got rid of all the race laws in this country. Uh, we've, we've, we're spending billions of dollars to help and work with Aboriginal people. And now it's about, you know, we've got to start making these people accountable for the money that's been spent because they were given money to lift their communities and lift their people out of, of poverty and get things happening. But if you're going to be trapped in this victimhood grievance uh, mentality, then you're not going to move forward. It's, it's a fact of life. You know, it, just about every race, every country in the world had been either colonised, invaded, uh, had civil wars and had horrible things that happened to them. And, but they've had to accept that history uh, and then move forward about, OK, how, how do we go forward from here? How do we make Australia a better place? How do we, how do we, how do we make Australia, uh, you know, what, which is one of the, the greatest liberal democracies and... Uh, in the world, as well as it has been one of the greatest uh, multicultural, multi-racial, multi-faith country in the world about how we handle it. In fact, we're one of the most less racist countries in the, in, in the history of humanity. You're on the record, Warren, as saying something that's pretty courageous in the context of a debate that seems oriented towards entrenching grievance culture and group blame and victimhood. The courageous thing you said was, quote, the only person who can change your life is you. It's a fundamental statement of common sense, but why is this so rare in the context of the voice debate? Oh, because people are living off the misery of Aboriginal people. You only have to look at it. Uh, you, know, you know, as long if Ab if all Aboriginal ki uh, kids got to school and got education, if if the adults, their parents, and that got jobs. You know, we wouldn't need these government departments. We wouldn't need all these all these so-called organisations out there to help us. You know, we'd be we'd be driving ahead. We'd be running a massive economy. We own 55% of the Australian land mass. We've got some of the biggest uh, mining and energy and agricultural lands in the country, and and that would make us very self-determined. And people got to remember that. When you talk about self-determination, it starts with self. You can spend as much money, you can have as many psychologists, you can have as many people as you want, but unless you want to move forward, it means nothing. I reckon that speaks to a lot of people. Finally, James Morrow revealed this week that Thomas Mayo, the, one of the lead designers of The Voice, was encouraging his union colleagues to exercise the special rights they have under the Fair Work Act to enter work sites for the purposes of pushing the yes case. Now, Warren, these are special powers gifted to unions for the narrow purpose of representing employees or investigating breaches of legislation. Is it an abuse of those special powers to use it to campaign for the yes side of the referendum? Oh, look, there's no doubt about that. That's that's exactly what it is. That they're abusing their their, their the workers' rights in there. But why should we be surprised? You know, Thomas Mayo is is a well-known uh, uh, socialist. He's a well-known uh, you know supporter of the communists. He's he's he's, he's uh, you know, if you ever seen anything that is not. Uh, Aboriginal culture, then you only have to look at the communists because we are very spirit, spiritual, we are very religious people and, and, and we are a group of people who, 
who, who are trying to drive forward and, and, and make our country better. And we're very happy to be uh, a part of, the Austra of Australia and be Australian citizens and, and also to play our role in helping to build this country as a better country. Warren Mundine, thank you very much for your time tonight.